All right. Well, here it is. Goats. Hi, goats. They're kind of scared of me. Hi, dudes. Here's one hiding under the tree over there. Hey. Oh, it likes me. Hello, dude. That's it. Wow. Mm. See y'all later. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I was driving along the road and I saw a sign that said river access. So I came down here to the end of this road over here. And then I saw this sign, which is a pretty scary sign. It says emergency exit channel for boaters. Travel over dam is very dangerous and could result in death which so then it naturally I looked for the dam right away you see these signs a lot in Colorado apparently a lot of people take to the water and then there are these obstructions that could result in death so let's take a look <laughs> you've got to assume some people actually gave it a try and then they put up the signs over here uh, I think that's the dam right there it's not really a Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just heading towards the dam. And then um, there's this really wide river. Wow. Huge wide river. Right? And a little place to sit here. So I'm going to sit down. And then talk for a minute about samskaras, otherwise known as samskaras. So, um, look what I found. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Whatever. Some kind of cattle thing. <laughs> a bunch more of them. And they were right by the river, too. Oh, here comes the bull, I think. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no! Don't get mad at me! And lots of friends. <laughs> so... I was, I was on my way up to sit someplace. Here he comes. He's after me. And, uh, no, okay, I'm safe. And uh, I was thinking, these cattle here are a lot like samskaras. Uh, that if you can imagine a bunch of cattle in your backyard, in your front yard, say, and every time you walk out of the house to go to the 7-Eleven or to work, you see these cattle there, right? Whoa, who's this? So, after a while, you get really used to them. Cattle in the front yard, and you don't pay any attention anymore. But they're always there. They're always popping up. And that's just like samskaras, or samskaras. So, hang on. I'm going to find a seat far from the cattle, and we'll continue this conversation. So... <clears throat> So we were talking about samskaras and how they're sort of like cows right out front and we don't pay that much attention to them because they're always there, right? And um, the thing about samskaras is they, they could actually be positive or negative uh, tendencies. And uh, the ones that we really want to get rid of are the negative samskaras. And uh, they both actually, positive and negative, have uh, operate by the same rules and that is if in our current lifetime we expose ourselves more to the energy signature or frequency or resonance of that particular samskara it grows in energy and the tendency increases for us to act it out in real life okay so so as far as negative samskaras are concerned the very first thing to do you see the cattle back there <laughs> a sufficient distance away right now <laughs> thank god well, they're sort of like uh, uh, attenuated samskaras. We'll get to that in a moment because they're far away. They're small, right? They're relatively small. Or that's the way it is. They're not threatening me right now. I felt a little threatened when they were close by. <laughs> so uh, anyway, there they are, the attenuated samskaras back there. <laughs> and the way, the way you can attenuate, first you have to identify them. You notice that you're having a certain habit of thought that you don't like. It might be impatience, it might be um, 
uh, just a general negativity, self-pity, uh, low self-esteem. It could be practically anything, but you find out a tendency toward anger, a tendency toward regret or grief. These are just some examples. And these things are not very helpful in your life, and it seems that they're, that they're growing, and that maybe even you're acting them out in your life, right? So the thing to do, first of all, you realize that that, that tendency is there. And the next thing has to do with attenuation. Uh, you can do that in several ways. The first thing, uh, the first possibility and the simplest one might be to realize what things in your life are, are causing those samskaras to increase. Uh, for a lot of people today, uh, and almost invariably, this has to do with uh, visual input, like from television, the movies, uh, the internet, and the reason for that is that many of the images and even many of the words on the internet, many of the images on TV and in the movies are negative and tend to increase whatever negative, the, the resonance of whatever, the energy of whatever negative samskaras we have. So first I would look at my television viewing, say, or what movies I like to watch uh, when I go out or what I'm really doing on the internet and that and change that so that whatever it is doesn't is not something that makes your that increases your samskaras you know and uh, and that's kinda hard to do because there are very few few positive uh, po there are very few entertainment options that enhance positive samskaras right now but it can be done for instance there's that spiritual cinema channel uh, uh, option that you have on um, the internet and their, their documentary films and uh, depending on the type of documentary and so forth. So that's the first thing is, is avoid uh, influences or let's say you have a tendency to, to carouse and make merry, right? So, and the problem is that the people that are in that carousing and make merry place where you go they have a, a tendency towards various behaviors that that are life-threatening to you or dangerous to, to other people and so the thing to do if you like to carouse and make merry is to find a group of people that like to do that that, that don't in, don't cause those problems for you in your life so that's another example of avoiding experiences that make things worse then of course the next thing is to, to attenuate the samskaras that you t have is to, is to try a visualization uh, recommended, uh, I think it was recommended by Swami J, but anyway you can get a lot more information on attenuating samskaras at his website. And um, the, the way I do this is like this. Suppose, suppose for example, I remember a past lifetime when something really terrible happened. I had a brother that I really loved. And, uh, and he killed me brutally over a woman. It was awful. We were two brothers together. And it's a hard one to forget because, um, because of the closeness uh, between us and the total reversal of roles that, that happened at the moment of death, which is always, can be very traumatic, right? Not always. <laughs> so I remember that. And uh, I have a tendency in this lifetime because of that not to trust people in a brotherly relationship. It's not true anymore, but it, it could have been true. And uh, so... So the way to attenuate is to imagine that past lifetime death in all its awful detail and with all the full emotional response and then start changing it every time that it's, it comes up. Start changing it. I, I, the way I do it is like this. Oh, I remember uh, a story like that. I read about it uh, in, in my childhood and I wish I had never read it. It was really a gruesome story, but it was just a story. That's the first thing. And then it could be something like next time. Oh geez, a friend of mine told me that story a long time ago. 
about somebody else that she that was a stranger to her and what a what a terrible story gosh like that far farther and farther away from you like the cows right <laughs> and so then you could go one of the things I like is oh geez that story I was looking through the library catalog some some years ago and I saw something about a story like that but I went back and I looked in the catalog and lo and behold, the book is no longer there. <laughs> so after a while, it, it just loses all its kick and all its ability to influence uh, me during this lifetime. That's a, one of the attenuation techniques. And then there's another technique, and that is to to practice the opposite. This is Patanjali's technique, right? Um, so you know the energy signature of the thing that you want to avoid. So then you look at what uh, activities you could add to your life or increase in your life that would have the exact opposite effect or at least a neutralizing effect. So in the case of distrust, it might be to work in a situation where trust is needed, like elder care. It could be taking care of children. It could be uh, assisting someone who needs help in any way. Uh, it might be caring for pets. So you're getting yourself into a situation where you can practice trust, you know, not the opposite. Well, so that's all I have for you now about that. And maybe we'll get a picture of the goats before this video ends. Wait and see.